it is interesting, isn't it? To to because we don't know what consciousness is, right? Right. So it's a, it's often called a hard problem in science. We don't know. So it's a good question whether you can build. Let's say you want to build a self-replicating machine, which is what you're talking about, and something that can go and maybe go to the moon or Mars and replicate itself and then carry on, which is a living thing, I suppose. Yes. Does it have to have a sufficient level of intelligence that it actually is conscious? And all these things that we talked about, this this word meaning that we used earlier, that we all understand yeah. but can't define, is that a emergent property that, that has to emerge if you've got something that's intelligent enough to replicate itself and live and right. as you said be the I, I don't know the answer but it's worth considering that this thing this what we emotion meaning love and fear and all those things are just the things that happen when you are intelligent right i, I don't know the answer to that the caveat is always that we don't know about we don't this know. yeah it's 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 just not understood well i um, i think there's something weird happening. it's physical though i'm damn yes. sure it's physical I'm damn sure that there's nothing going on in my head other than what is allowed by the laws of nature as we understand them. <laughs> so, so eliminating who sure. you mean? The yeah. idea of uh, a soul being some sort of a divine thing that's inside the housing of the body. Yeah, I mean, I I, yeah. I would say we can rule that out, actually. I've argued in the past. How do you rule it out? I've argued we can rule that out in the following manner. <laughs> so, okay. So, so here's my arm, right? So it's made of electrons and protons and neutrons. And uh, if, I, if I have a soul in there, something that we don't understand, but it's a different kind of energy or whatever it is that we don't have in physics at the moment, it, it interacts with matter because I'm moving my hand around. So whatever it is, it's something that interacts very strongly with matter. But if you look at the history of particle physics in particular, which is the study of matter, we spend... We spent decades making high precision measurements of how matter behaves and interacts. And we look, for, for example, for a fifth force of nature. So we know four forces, the gravity, the two nuclear forces called the weak and strong nuclear forces, and electromagnetism. And that's what we know exists. And we look for another one with ultra high precision, and we don't see any evidence of it. So I would claim that we know how matter interacts at these energies so room temperature now, these energies, we know how matter interacts very precisely. And so if you want to suggest there's something else that interacts with matter strongly, then I would say that it's ruled out. I would go as far as to say it is ruled out by experiment, or at least it is extremely subtle. And you would have to jump through a lot of hoops to come up with a theory of some stuff that we wouldn't have seen when we've observed how matter interacts that is present in our bodies and presumably if you believe in the soul you want it to exist outside when you die you still want the thing to be there and you might believe in ghosts and things like that mm. i mean look at a ghost i mean it's a it is something that carries the imprint of you presumably it looks like you right so that means that it interacts strongly with the matter that is you because mm. it carries a pattern if it carries a pattern it carries information if it carries information, there has to be an energy source that allows that information to persist and the pattern to persist and so on. So again, you end up with a, a, a theory that is postulating something. It interacts with light because if, if you think a ghost is the soul, then it's something that people see sometimes. Mm. So that means it interacts with light. But we know how light interacts and we've ruled out anything but the most subtle uh, further interaction that we haven't seen. The woo-woo version is that the brain itself and the body, the physical, the this, this, this spiritual self, you are uh, merely an antenna that's tuning in to the, uh, the, the great consciousness of the universe. But why? But then you have to answer what it, we know what we are made of. Yeah. So we know how those particles behave and interact. Right. So, so why do the particles not... Uh, in any way interact with that stuff because we interact we don't uh, if that's true we don't only just interact with it we interact mm -hmm. extremely strongly with it we're interacting with it now yeah every movement i make is an interaction between that right. and every the matter thought you have body. yeah yes well everything if i move my fingers around everything that i'm doing right is an interaction between that stuff and me so it's a very strong interaction with matter but we don't see it 
in all our precision measurements? Well, the, the answer for that, the answer is because it's not there. The answer is Jesus, and uh, you can't measure God. That may be <laughs> an answer, but the, the point is, as we talked about earlier with absolute space, yes. if you can't measure it, yeah. it's not there. Mm. Right. It's but for for whatever reason, for people, there is some incredible motivation to find uh, a divine something or another. That's there's something greater than this physical being. That there's something. What do you think that is? Like, what is that compulsion? It, we we've already sort of talked a bit about it. it. I think it goes to the the heart of this question of what it means to be human. Mm. So. I would say that being human, the answer, right? To the, it's not, I don't have the answer to the meaning of it all, but the, an answer would be uh, we are small, finite beings, right? Which are just clusters of atoms, as we said before, that are very rare, but we understand roughly how they, how they came to be. And we have a, a limited amount of time, not actually unfortunately but because of the laws of nature right? the laws of nature forbid us to be immortal they they, they they immortality is ruled out by the laws of physics but also actually what it, what's interesting about if you look at the basic physics of the universe going from the big bang to where we are today then the physics is driven by the fact that the universe began in an extremely ordered state so it was a very highly ordered system. And it is tending towards a more disordered system at the moment. And that's called the second law of thermodynamics. And it's that basic common sense thing that things go to shit. Right? That's the, yeah. Basically, it's the second law of thermodynamics. What we strongly suspect, and, and I would say no, uh, is that in that process of going from order to disorder, complexity emerges naturally for a brief period of time. So it's a natural part of the evolution of the universe that you get a period in time when there's complexity in the universe. So stars and planets and galaxies and life and civilizations. But they, are, they exist because the universe is decaying, not in spite of the fact the universe is decaying. So our existence in that sort of picture is necessarily finite and necessarily time limited and it is a remarkable thing that that complexity has got so far that there are things in the universe that can think and feel and explore it. And I think that is the answer. If you want an answer to the meaning of it all, it's that. That you are part of the universe because of the way the laws of nature work. You are allowed to exist, but you're allowed to exist for a temporary or for a small amount of time in a possibly infinite universe. One of the biggest mind-blowing moments, I think, of my limited comprehension of what it means to be a living being was when I found out that carbon and all the stuff that makes us has to come out of a dying star. Yeah. We see these things in the sky. We see the sun in the sky. It's this all-powerful ball of fire, yeah. and that that is where... The building blocks for a person come from. I know. It's, uh, so, and, and they will be from the carbon atoms in our body. That You're right. They all got made in stars because there were just none of it at the Big Bang. There's only hydrogen and helium, tiny bit of lithium to be precise, but no, nothing else. And so it was all made in stars. And it's probably from different stars. You know, the, the atoms in your body, they're not all from one star that cooked it and then died. There'll be a mixture of stuff from many stars in your body now. And, and I agree with you. That the, what more do you want? You know, when I, when I see people who go, I want, I want more than that. I want, more, you know, it must, there must be more to it. What do you mean? The, 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 we, have, we, have, we were, the ingredients in our bodies were assembled in the hearts of long dead stars over billions of years and have assembled themselves spontaneously into temporary structures that can think and feel and explore and then those structures will decay away again at some point. And in the very far future, there'll be no structures left. So, so there we are. We exist in this little window when we can observe this magnificent universe. Why do you want any more? The, the real treasure, I think, is in that journey of trying to face the incomprehensible. Yes. It's, it's in that realization that it's almost, it's, it's almost impossible to 
believe that we exist. Right? Yes, right. But that's 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 a wonderful thing. Yeah. And I think that's that's what I think you miss out. I think if you decide to simplify it because you don't want to face that, you don't want to face the infinity that's out there in front of us, and you don't want to face those stories, as you said, that that you look at your finger and its ingredients was cooked in multiple stars over billions of years. That that's a to me a a joyous and powerful thing to think about. Yes. 